Hey guys, welcome to another video on this channel. Born in Chaos is a mod that adds many new hostile monsters as well as weapons, armors, bosses and even structures to Minecraft. It diversifies and complicates your survival and will give you many new challenges you have to master. With this mod, going out at night and exploring caves will finally be dangerous again. Let's dive in. With this mod installed, you will encounter a variety of new monsters at night. Let's start with the undead mobs you can encounter. Baby skeletons are fast baby variants of the skeletons, but are not a huge threat on their own. They drop bones upon dying. Decrepit skeletons are also pretty weak monsters that do melee attacks. They can drop bones or shattered skulls upon dying, which are useful for crafting recipes. Skeleton demo men are similar to decrepit skeletons. However, they don't burn in the sun, and when the health drops to a certain limit, they will stand still and start detonating so you have to kill them quickly or run away. They can drop gunpowder and bones upon dying. Decaying zombies are like normal zombies, but when they are on low health, their flesh falls off, dropping rotten flesh items or bones, and they will turn into decrepit skeletons. The Bone Imp is an enhanced version of the baby skeleton that can be found in the nether. It can drop coal, bones and firelight dust upon dying. The Barrel Zombie can be found near to water bodies. It does not drown, has protection from the sun, increased armor, and upon dying this mob can drop a variety of items, from garbage to very valuable items. The door knight has protection from the sunlight, increased armor, and can even block your attacks. To prevent it from blocking your attacks, set it on fire or attack it with an axe. It can drop rotten flesh, iron ingots, pieces of dark metal, mesh doors, carrots, or rarely a pitchfork upon dying. The Zombie Clown is a slow enemy that will smash an intoxicating potion on you upon hitting you, which will slow you down and give you several other negative effects, like dizziness and poisoning. It can drop rotten flesh, poisonous potatoes, an intoxicating dagger and intoxicating decotions upon dying. Zombie Fishermen can spawn your bodies of water. They don't burn in the sun, attack you with a rotten fish, which will give you the rotten stink effect. This effect will spawn a swarm of midges around a target and every 20 seconds, it summons a corpse fly near the target. If the target is in water, it summons a corpse fish. Zombie fishermen drop rotten fish and flesh, as well as salmon, puffer fish, river mint, and enchanted fishing rods upon dying. The swarmer is a zombie infected with flies that does not burn in the sun. When it receives damage, it will periodically summon a corpse fly. Upon dying, it will explode, releasing a swarm of flies, maggots, and sometimes bloody get flies. It can drop rotten flesh, corpse maggots and slime balls upon dying. The zombie bruiser is a pretty dangerous zombie that has more health, is faster and stuns you and knocks you back upon hitting you. The stun effect will prevent you from moving and reduce your damage for the effect's duration. It can drop rotten flesh, iron ingots, oak logs, pieces of dark metal and golden carrots upon dying. The skeleton thresher is slow but really strong and can block your attacks. To deprive it of the ability to block attacks, set it on fire or attack it with an axe. The mob deals a lot of damage, knocks you back and briefly stuns you upon hitting you. It can drop bones, shattered skulls, shields, a skullbreaker hammer and piles or pieces of dark metal upon dying. The spirit guide can be found in dry and hot biomes. It does not burn in the sun and will inflict the magic depletion effect on you, which prevents you from using certain items from the Born in Chaos mod for the effect's duration. It can also prevent mobs like the Bones Caller from summoning minions. During battle, it can summon small helpers. The mob drops bones, marigolds, shattered skulls, ethereal spirits and pieces of dark metal upon dying. Marigolds can be crafted into orange dye. The Bones Caller uses a magic staff as a weapon and uses ranged attacks. It can summon baby skeletons to attack the player. You can disable that ability by setting it on fire or throwing a potion of magical depletion at it. Upon dying, the mob can drop bones, pieces of dark metal, shattered skulls and seeds of chaos, as well as the orb of the summoner and staff of magic arrows. The fallen chaos knight is a very dangerous monster with a strong armor and high movement speed. The mob does not burn in the sun and can't be damaged by arrows. Upon hitting you, it will inflict the cursed mark effect on you. When this effect expires, up to four scarlet persecutors will spawn around you. Upon dying, the mob can drop rotten flesh, pieces and piles of dark metal, seeds of chaos and dark metal upgrade smithing templates. The zombie lumberjack is a zombie armed with a special axe, with which he can instantly break a vanilla wooden shield and which also deals a lot of damage. 
It can drop rotten flesh, logs, iron, and occasionally a wood splitter. Siamese Skeletons is a new type of baby skeleton that consists of two skeletons in one and has a similar behavior to a baby skeleton. When the mob is at half its health, it will split into two skeletons. The mob drops fused bones. Let's move on to spirit mobs, some of which will disappear in direct sunlight. With this mod installed, blazes, ghasts, phantoms, vexes and allies will also count as spirits and will receive more damage from certain weapons. The Scarlet Persecutor, which is summoned by the Cursed Mark, chases the player at a great distance of up to 150 blocks. The monster can fly and will make sharp attacks towards you. If you have been cursed by the Cursed Mark, hide in narrow spaces, so the spirits cannot appear. The mob drops ethereal spirits upon dying. Restless spirits will shackle and slow down your movement upon hitting you. They can fly and can drop ethereal spirits or chains upon dying. Phantom Creepers act like usual creepers. But if you hit the mob, it will split into two copies of itself. But don't worry, it can't divide into copies more than once. The mob spawns in the overworld, but also in warped forests in the nether and in the end dimension. It can drop phantom powder upon dying, which can be used to multiply gunpowder. The pumpkin spirit is a neutral mob that can be found on farm structures and will attack all monsters in the territory. It is vulnerable to fire, because as it comes in contact with fire, it will turn into a seared spirit. You can make your own pumpkin spirit scarecrow by placing two dark oak logs, a block of hay and a carved pumpkin above each other and then right clicking on the pumpkin with the ethereal spirit item. The mob can drop hay blocks, carved pumpkins, sticks and ethereal spirits upon dying. The seared spirit is hostile, sets you on fire and is no longer a defensive golem. It takes damage by water or rain and is immune to fire damage. You can heal this mob again by right-clicking it with a transmuting elixir in your hand. This will turn the mob into an infernal spirit, which is a stronger version of the pumpkin spirit that will attack all monsters again and which will have protection from fire and which will inflict the infernal fire effect on its targets. This seared spirit can drop ethereal spirits, charcoal, a flaming evil pumpkin and firelight dust upon dying. The dark vortex is a spirit that launches blinding clots of darkness at you. The mob can disorient you a lot and reflects all projectiles. It can drop ethereal spirits and dark rots upon dying. The Nightmare Stalker is an extremely dangerous spirit that will appear from the third night of the game on. Its appearance is accompanied by special sounds and a message in the chat. The mob is usually moving around while being invisible and you can only see its two glowing eyes. In its invisible state it is much faster, but as soon as you hit it, it loses invisibility. The mob can notice you up to 70 blocks away, immediately starting to stalk you. When attacking you, it produces a scream and casts a gaze of terror, which will give you blindness, magical depletion and also wither as well as darkness. While having the gaze of terror effect, you are prevented from using some magic items. The longer you survive in your Minecraft world, the stronger the stalker will become, with a maximum strength after 100 days. The mob can drop ethereal spirits, pieces of dark metal, monster flesh, nightmare claws, monster skin and the nightmare stalker skull. The missionary is a spirit mini boss that will appear after the 10th day. It is accompanied by two zombie villagers. The mob will shoot magical projectiles at you that when they hit will cause evoker fangs to appear under the target. The first time you hit the mob it will cause rain. When it receives further damage it will teleport itself and will summon undead mobs a couple of seconds later. You can prevent the teleportation and summoning of undead using the magical depletion effect and the nightmare scythe respectively. The mob can drop random charms, ethereal spirits, the orb of the summoner and pieces or piles of dark metal. Besides undead and spirit mobs, there are also some further monsters. Corpse maggots do not spawn naturally, but only appear sometimes when a zombie dies. The chance for that depends on the type of zombie. The mobs are pretty weak and slow, but can be annoying in numbers. You can disable their appearance using the game rule Maggot's Appearance. They drop Corpse Maggot. Corpse Flies are weak mobs that can be strong in numbers. Despite their wings, they are not able to fly above a block, but they are able to soar. Corpse Flies will also attack decaying zombies, slowly turning them into swarmers if you don't kill the zombie first. Corpse Flies can also drop Corpse Maggots upon dying. Bloody Gat Flies are like Corpse Flies, but stronger. They spawn near to bodies of water and inflict Myasis on you which will give you periodic damage until your health is below 17 units, so 8 hearts. The effect blocks the regeneration effect and when the effect ends, it summons maggots next to you. You can get rid of the effect by jumping into water. 
The mobs can also drop maggots upon dying. Firelights are found in the nether and near firewalls, which are small structures in the overworld. They set you on fire and the mob is immune to fire. Firelights also attack pumpkin spirits to corrupt them. They can drop firelight dust upon dying and will set the ground on fire when they die. Besides the normal diamond ore, you can now sometimes find an infected diamond ore. And once you destroy this block, diamond termites will come out of the nearest ore. These termites have increased armor and inflict the fatigue effect. You can disable these mobs when creating a world. They can drop diamond termite shards and pieces of dark metal. Termite shards can be crafted into diamonds. Note that infested diamond ore blocks do not replace the normal diamond ore blocks, but generate separately. Fawn shell crabs are neutral animals that spawn in coastal biomes. They have a strong armor and will inflict damage to you if you hit them, regardless of the range. You can feed a fawn shell crab with rotten fish or rotten flesh. The mob will give you bone meal as well as sometimes a spiny shell in return. They can drop spiny shells and rotten fish upon dying. The corpse fish is an aggressive fish that will appear in all aquatic biomes. The mob isn't really strong but really fast, so you basically can't escape a corpse fish. The mob also attacks drowned and can drop rotten fish and bone meal upon dying. The glutton fish is a huge monster that can be found in oceans and that attacks basically everything it encounters in the water, except some aggressive mobs. The monster's attacks will inflict high damage, which makes armor essential when facing it. You can block its attacks with a shield, after which the mob will be temporarily disoriented, giving you a chance to attack. It drops rotten fish, glutton fish stomach and glutton fish eyes upon dying. The red hounds will spawn in small flocks and they hunt most types of skeletons, as well as the player. However, if you have not attacked them yet, you can appease them by giving them a bone or a shattered skull by right clicking. Then the appeased hound will not attack you for some time, except if you hit it, which will make it aggressive again. If you encounter hounds in the desert, near gnawed bones, which is a tiny structure, they will not despawn until you kill them. They can drop monster flesh, skin and gnawed bones upon dying. Direhound leaders are rare monsters that are always accompanied by two direhounds. They also hunt skeletons and players, but can also be appeased with a bone if you haven't attacked the mob before. The monster's attacks inflict the bone fracture effect, which slows and weakens you, but disappears when there is a regeneration effect. The direhound leader periodically summons direhounds during combat. It can drop monster flesh, skin, gnawed bones and fangs of the hound leader upon dying. Let's take a look at the pumpkin mobs. Mr. Pumpkin is a slow and weak spirit and doesn't drop anything. It only spawns between October 25th and November 5th and will also come to the aid of Sir Pumpkinhead during battle. Sir Pumpkinhead is a mini boss that will only appear in your world from October 25th and November 5th or you can summon it by destroying a special pumpkin surrounded by candles that you can find in your world by walking around. The boss has three phases. In the first he rides a horse, uses melee attacks and inflicts the bundle of the soul effect which slows you down and deals damage after it expires. The mob also teleports sometimes and summons Mr. Pumpkins. In the second phase, it will dismount the horse and while the horse attacks you in the vicinity, the rider will shoot at you with explosive pumpkins and will keep on teleporting and summoning Mr. Pumpkins. In the third phase, the boss's head will detach from the body and while the body fights you with a soul bundle, the head will shoot and teleport. The final target is the head and upon defeating the boss, you will receive a pumpkin staff and you can get some holiday candy, a soul saber with enchantments and a new music disc. There is also a 30% chance you will receive a fell lamp. Lord Pumpkinhead is a stronger version of Sir Pumpkinhead. To summon the boss, right click on an infernal evil pumpkin with transmuting elixir. Lord Pumpkinhead should only be fought in the late game and requires the best possible equipment or many resources to fight. It also has three stages. The first one is also on horseback and each attack will inflict the soul stratification effect which will slow you down for the effect's duration and when the effect expires it deals damage to you depending on your current health. So more health, more damage. And it will remove all other effects from you like regeneration. It will also inflict infernal flame which will burn you from the inside giving you free fire damage every 2 seconds and which can't be stopped with water but only with fire resistance. When the mob's health falls below half it will inflict the living bomb curse instead of soul stratification, which will explode you when expiring and which will remove all your effects. Lord Pumpkinhead will also teleport periodically in the first stage, leaving behind two senior pumpkins, which are stronger versions of Mr. Pumpkin. Or it will leave behind a pumpkin bomb that explodes a second later, inflicting the infernal fire effect and leaving behind a fell soil block. 
Fell soil is similar to magma blocks. In the second stage, the boss will dismount its horse and will shoot with its pistol, while the horse attacks you in close range, which will stun you. The pumpkin head's shots will inflict infernal fire, and the lord will keep on teleporting, leaving behind senior pumpkins and bombs. In the third stage, the head will disconnect while shooting at a faster rate, while the body attacks you at close range, causing the same effects as in the first stage. Upon defeating the boss, you will receive Soul Bane, the Pumpkin Pistol, Magical Holiday Candy, and with a 50% chance, the Lord Pumpkinhead's Lamp. There are also a few structures. The Dark Tower is a tower dungeon in the overworld, in which you will encounter stronger mobs and better loot as you ascend the tower. At the top, you will face the Supreme Bone Scholar. This is a mini boss that is similar to the normal Bone Scholar, but is surrounded by a bone shield, protecting it from ranged weapons. It also summons bone imps instead of baby skeletons. After the shield is destroyed, the mob can be attacked with ranged weapons. But then it will also be stronger and summon more minions. It can drop seeds of chaos, bones, shattered skulls, the orb of the summoner, staff of magic arrows and death totems. The cursed blocks from the dark tower cannot be obtained without third party mods at the moment. There is also a lookout tower dungeon with some opponents to fight but no boss on the top. You can also find it in the overworld. There are also occasionally small farms with a villager and a pumpkin spirit. Furthermore, you can find clown carts with a zombie clown, zombie horses and some loot. And in some of the structures, you can find dark metal deposits, which are blocks that when mined, drop a piece of dark metal. Let's move on to the equipment. The spiny shell helmet and chestplate can be crafted using spiny shells and will give slightly less protection than their diamond counterparts as well as inflict two retaliatory damage per armor piece to attacking enemies. By enchanting it with fawns, you can increase the retaliatory damage up to 10. It will also give you immunity against spiny shell traps and retaliatory strikes of the fawn shell crab. The full nightmare armor set gives also slightly less protection than diamond armor and will increase the effectiveness of magic items and weapons. Here's a list of all bonuses. The helmet will also let you move faster in the dark. The armor can be crafted using monster skin, pieces of dark metal, the nightmare stalker skull and dark metal ingots, which are smelted piles of dark metal in a blast furnace. The dark metal armor will give you more armor and armor toughness than netherite armor. A full set of dark metal armor protects you from the wither effect and at 3 hearts or below, the armor gives you the rampage effect of the maximum stage, which means 15 additional damage and 100% additional movement speed. The Rampage effect is an effect with 5 stages and will increase with each level your speed and damage with the maximum of 15 additional damage and 100% additional movement speed. To craft the armor you need netherite armor parts and then put them with a dark metal armor plate and a dark metal upgrade smithing template in a smithing table. The smithing template can be dropped by the fallen chaos knight or be found in chests in the new structures of the mod. For most weapons, you will need a new bone handle, which is crafted using pieces of dark metal and dark rods. The Staff of Magic Arrows does not require ammunition and shoots magic arrows. It gives average damage and some knockback and can be used as a weak melee weapon as well. You can also use it in your second hand. The Bone Scholar Staff lets you summon two baby skeletons by right-clicking on a block. The skeletons will attack all monsters they see and they disappear after a minute. After using the staff, you will get the magical depletion effect, which prevents you from using the summoning again for a few seconds. The orb of the summoner, which you need to craft the staff, is a rare drop of the bone scholar or a guaranteed drop of the supreme bone scholar. The pumpkin staff shoots exploding pumpkins, which won't break blocks. When it hits a block, it sometimes calls for Mr. Pumpkin to help you. Mr. Pumpkin is slow, but deprives monsters of using some magical abilities or the ability to block attacks. Mr. Pumpkin will disappear after 2 minutes. You will also receive the Magic Drain effect after summoning him. The Pumpkin Staff requires Pumpkin Seeds to fire. The Pumpkin Pistol is a magical ranged explosive weapon and will apply the Infernal Fire effect to the target but not destroy blocks. You can reduce the cooldown and increase the duration of the ignition by wearing a full Nightmare Armor set. It also needs Pumpkin Seeds to fire. The Nightmare Scythe is a melee weapon with a low attack speed, but each hit will inflict blindness, magic drain and wither on the target and will heal the wielder. It is really effective against the Bone Scholar as it prevents the mob from summoning minions after the first summoning and it prevents Sir Pumpkinhead from teleporting. It is crafted using Nightmare Claws. The Great Reaper Axe will let you go in a short term rampage when slaying an opponent, which increases your damage and speed. 
For each consecutive kill while on the rampage, the effect will increase until reaching a maximum with level 5 and then just extending the effect and healing you. If you drink a potion of rampage after reaching level 5, its duration will be extended from a few seconds to a couple of minutes. The Dark Ritual Dagger is a fast melee weapon. By right-clicking on a summoned minion or animal like sheep, pig, cow or chicken, you can heal yourself and give yourself strength. The amount of health depends on a sacrificed victim. The intoxicating dagger inflicts poison on the target, slowing it down and giving it nausea. It is ineffective against undead mobs. The soul saber imposes the soul stratification effect on the target, which will slow it down and upon expiring will deal damage to the target. The higher the health of the target, the higher the damage. It also removes all other effects from the target. The Soulbane Sword will also apply the Soul Stratification effect, as well as Infernal Fire. Wearing a full set of Nightmare Armor will reduce the time between the Soul Stratification damage effects. The Skullbreaker Hammer can push the opponent away and stun it, when jumping or being in the air while hitting. You can craft it using a Dark Metal Block. The Dark Warblade is a two-handed sword that can only be used while under the effect of Strength. Otherwise, you will be slowed and weakened. This sword deals a lot of damage and applies the breaking a bone effect on the victim. Strikes also remove regeneration effects from the target and prevent mobs like the Door Knight and Skeleton Thresher from blocking attacks. The sharpened Dark Metal Sword deals more damage to undead mobs. The Spirit Divider deals more damage to spirits. The Pitchfork can rarely be dropped by the Door Knight and has a cool animation when being used with better combat. The Shell Mace deals more damage to the target if you are in water or in the rain. The damage is not reduced by armor. The Wood Splitter is a new tool similar in efficiency to gold and in strength to iron. An attack with this axe prevents mobs such as the Door Knight and Skeleton Thresher from blocking attacks. It can also instantly break wooden shields. The Hound Trap deals high damage to anyone who steps on it. It immobilizes the target for a short time and inflicts the Bone Fracture effect. The Trap deals half as much damage to players as well as increased damage to undead or animal mobs. It can be pre-activated by throwing an item at it, which will destroy the item, or by hitting it with a projectile. It can be crafted with the fangs of the Hound Leader. The Spiny Shell Trap deals periodic damage to everyone who steps on it, like a cactus. Entities protected from this type of damage, for example because of the Spiny Shell Armor, will not receive it. The spikes also slow down the target a bit and prevent the target from jumping out. The Supreme Measure is a creative mode item that deals 5000 damage. There are some further items. The Intoxicating Bomb is like a lingering potion and can be crafted using intoxicating decotions. The explosion will not break blocks, but destroy loot and create a puddle that inflicts intoxication on whoever steps into it. The Death Totem is like the Totem of Immortality, as it saves you from lethal damage when held in your hand, while quickly healing you and granting you strength. However, it almost completely deprives you of satiety and saturation and imposes the effect of magical depletion, which prevents another death totem to work. It is crafted using seeds of chaos and shattered skulls. Rotten flesh cannot be composted or smoked, so it will not inflict hunger when eaten. The same goes for rotten fish. Now, if you eat rotten food that is not smoked, you will receive the rotten stink effect. Maggots can be eaten or smelted and eaten afterwards. Bottles of magical energy will remove effects of mining fatigue and magic depletion. They are crafted with firelight dust. Monster flesh poisons you when you eat it, but after smoking it, it will not inflict negative effects anymore. It leaves a bone after being consumed. It can also be used as a weak melee weapon. The glutton fish eye can be eaten to restore your oxygen level or be brewed into a long-lasting potion of water breathing. Simply use the same ingredients like in vanilla, only using the eye as the main ingredient. Right click with a glutton fish stomach in your hand to open its contents with some possible valuable items. River mint is a new plant that can be found near water bodies. It can be crafted into mint ice cream, which will extinguish you from burning, including infernal fire. And it can be crafted into mint candy, which will remove the rotten stink effect and hunger when eaten. A potion of rampage is a powerful potion that grants the rampage effect. With each repeated use of the rampage potion, you can increase the effect up to level 5. In combination with the Reaper's X, you can bring yourself to the 5th level of Rampage, thereby extending the maximum effect with just one potion. Transmuting Elixir is a very expensive item that will allow you to transform specific mobs into something else by right-clicking on the target. The main use is to transform the evil Infernal Pumpkin into Lord Pumpkinhead. You can also transform an Iron Block into a Dark Metal Block 
a block of raw gold into ancient debris, an amethyst block into a diamond block, and you can transform a seared spirit into an infernal spirit. The fell lamp can be dropped by Sir Pumpkinhead and allows you to summon the fell steed by right clicking on a block. This mob can be ridden and you can increase its movement speed by feeding it ethereal spirits. The fell steed can walk on water by placing down temporary fell soil. The mob can be returned to the lamp by shift right clicking on it with an empty lamp in your hand. Lord Pumpkinhead's lamp works similar but summons a larger mount. If you lost your mount, you can fill the lamp again by crafting it together with an ethereal spirit and orb of the summoner. Fused bones can be made into a bone heart. This is a consumable item that when used gives the effect of the bone barrier for almost an hour. The effect blocks any initial damage and then disappears. Charms come in 5 types. Each charm has 5 charges and requires ethereal spirits to be used. When used, it costs 1 charge and 1 ethereal spirit and will give you 1 minute of the respective effect. The Charm of Strength grants Strength 3. The Charm of Resistance, Resistance 2. The Charm of Stealth grants Invisibility 3. The Charm of Endurance grants Speed 3 and Fully Restore Saturation. And the Charm of Fury gives the second level of Rampage and restores some health. Holiday Candy and Magical Holiday Candy can both be eaten. Holiday Candy restores 4 Saturation Points and Magical Holiday Candy restores Saturation completely. They can be eaten at any time, even if the Hunger Indicator is full. Finally, there are some new building blocks, like a variety of bone blocks, like bundle of bones, which can be crafted using bone bundles, and piles of skulls. There are also black argolite blocks, that are crafted using black argolite, which spawns at a depth of 17 to minus 17. There are scorched log blocks, which are created by combining any standard logs and firelight dust. The planks can be made brittle by right clicking them with an axe. After doing that, the planks will break when stepped on. There is a new type of fence, called dark grid. Furthermore, you can craft a variety of new colored glass blocks called ornate glass and a new argolite lamp. The flaming evil pumpkin and infernal evil pumpkin can be crafted with an evil carved pumpkin. An evil carved pumpkin can now be obtained by using shears on a cultivated pumpkin. A cultivated pumpkin is made by combining a regular pumpkin with bone meal. Mesh doors are occasionally dropped by the door knight. And this is it. I am a big fan of this mod, and actually also use it in my own survival world. In my opinion, it perfectly uses elements from vanilla Minecraft and expands them by designing the mobs based on existing Minecraft skeletons and zombies. Also the special mobs look pretty cool, and they definitely pose a new challenge without being too strong. Finally, I also like the connection to other games, like Plants vs Zombies and the design of the door zombie for example. The mod is pretty straightforward, not too complicated, and increases the variety of fights, weapons, and so on. Note that I also used better combat for this video, because the mods are compatible, and the animations and combat are much cooler that way. And this is it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.